Friday, April 5th, John Arvosis here with the Arvosis Report, coming to you live from Washington, D.C. Hello, all on YouTube. Welcome, guys. Um, as always, let me get TikTok kind of set up over here on my... There you are. All right, let me get TikTok set up on my iPad, and then we are ready to rock and roll. TikTok. Remember, tomorrow morning, we've got our uh, coffee talk with the paid subscribers, so don't forget that. I'll talk about that more in a minute, but just to remind folks while we're doing this, Ukraine update. All right, that'll go. All right. Um, oops. One second here. Yep. I've got my glasses on. Hey, guys. Hey, Carl. Hey, Strange. <laughs> Linda, thank you guys for the comments. Appreciate it. Um, let's try that. All right. Boom. All right, go live on TikTok. There we go. All right. Oops, there we go. Mirror. All right, we are live. Hey, Annie in Sweden. All right. Woo woo. Hello, everybody. Hello, Amanda and Alberta. Oh, and the TikTokers are rolling momentarily. They're notifying. There we go. Hey, Dick. Hey, others. Marcelino. Welcome, guys. Just started the live a minute ago. Hey, Ash. Ah, hey, Sojo. Anyway, hey, guys. Yeah, so um, do your usual. Uh, say where you are from, if you would. We always like to kind of start, the, while we're waiting for folks to arrive anyway, it's just kind of nice for people to say where they're from. I think it's interesting. I am in Washington, D.C., for that matter. Thank you, Yak, for the first gift of the day. Appreciate that very much. Oh, so what else is going on, guys? We will start the show in a minute. It was getting cold here, and now I'm getting warm, so I'm taking my sweater off, Mr. Rogers style. Well, I guess Mr. Rogers puts the sweater on when he when he arrives. So, uh, Belgium, Ireland, Buffalo, New York. Hey, John S., thank you for the gift. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't quite sure there'd be lots of news today, but there's lots of news today. So, some pretty good stuff, actually. Ukrainians did a pretty big strike against Russia. Very interesting news on that front. Um, Glassboro, Glassboro, New Jersey. Oh, that's funny. Um, I have heard nothing about Iran planning an attack. No. Where? Here? I mean, there was talk about Israel, but who knows? Thank you, Simon, for the hearts. Um, you know, who knows, though? I mean, ah, oh, hello, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Everyone's saying where you're from. Very nice. Um, also, make sure to like the live, hit the up button on, on YouTube, uh, tap the screen on TikTok. That, that throws the little hearts, which sort of tells the computer that you like the show. Thank you, Kim, for the Happy Friday gift. Uh, that's always a useful thing. Um, anyway, all right, guys, I think I'll get rolling here. You feel free to keep the gifts coming. You know how that works. Um, I do the show for free. I've been doing it for full since the war broke out, um, or full time since the war broke out, Monday to Friday, 6 o'clock Eastern. And then we also have our Saturday show for the paid subscribers. Um, so I appreciate your guys' support. Uh, your gifts help me pay the bills because I do this full time. So thank you. No one else is paying me. It's you guys. So I appreciate all of your help. Thank you, Aviation. Um, anyway, and Jetta as well. So uh, today's day 800 of Vladimir Putin's special three-day military operation in Ukraine. Uh, the war was supposed to take three to 10 days. It's been 800 days, not going so well. Um, Saturday, tomorrow, thank you, Jane, for the gift. We got Joyce and Jane and Joker and Adventures. Thank you, guys. And Succeed, thank you, guys. Um, thank you, Jen, as well. Lots of gifts coming. Thank you guys so much for this. And I think, uh, who was it, PC with the rose? So um, thank you, Joker, Natco, or Matco. The, um, sorry, sorry, all the, I always laugh. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Sean. Well, it's because I, I like to thank people when they give the gifts, but it always cracks me up because then I feel bad, like, not thanking you all. So thank you, <laughs> Leonardo, Joyce. It's like, I told you, it's like romper room. I go through the whole thing, D. Um, so, yeah, so tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning. So uh, Saturday morning. 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Washington, D.C. Time. Uh, join me if you are a paid monthly subscriber. Thank you, Derek. Uh, all the subscribers on TikTok that are the monthlies, so the folks with SNN next to their names, um, you are all invited. Everybody on YouTube who's got a green name, you guys are the monthly subscribers, you are all invited. And, um, oh, thank you, LWD. Very cool gift. Uh, I'm going to guess Little Dino. A oh, Little Dragon. A oh, Little Dragon Baby. Cool. Thank you, Flickr, for the lights. And Alan uh, and Derek. The um, uh, 
yeah, so tomorrow morning, join us. We've got uh, the paid subscribers. I basically do a monthly show or weekly show to thank guys who are our monthly subscribers. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, so on TikTok, that's 11 a.m. Washington, D.C., 11 a.m. Eastern time. Join us uh, just for the paid monthly folks. And YouTube, same thing. Join us here on YouTube. Also, for anybody from Discord, Twitch, Kofi, YouTube, you can also join us on Discord as well. You just got to make sure you connect the accounts. Oh, Alan, I do have an account like PayPal. The only problem is, oh, I see. Um, yes, yes, you can You can go to my profile on TikTok. Thank you for asking about that. TikTok does take a lot. Thank you, James. Thank you, LWD. And sorry, Cheryl, Joyce, Leonardo, Christine, Alan. Um, you can go to my profile on TikTok if you want. Uh, click the link, the link tree link, sort of red triangles pointing down. Click that link and you'll find my PayPal, my Venmo, my Cash App, all the rest of those. So thank you. I appreciate that. That's very nice of you. Um, no, I know nothing about Iran attacking Israel. That was a rumor like a day or two ago. I have no way to know if it's true. I haven't really heard anything about it. Thank you, Kevin, for the gift. So, you know, honestly, I kind of think Iran attacking Israel is in the same boat as Russia attacking us. Iran doesn't really need to have Israel, you know, un unleash a can of, whoosh, of whoop at it. So, and... The best way to guarantee that there isn't any daylight between Israel and America is for somebody else to attack Israel, because then the U.S. will have no choice but to basically stop our criticism and stop everything. So, yeah, that would be a huge mistake by Iran. Not that Iran isn't going to make that mistake, but kind of stupid. Anyway, I am the Ukraine guy, correct, because, by the way, Anna Magu, are you aware of how to actually say Ukraine? It's actually not pronounced in English. You may not have known that. <laughs> Maybe you didn't know. Maybe you thought in Ukraine they actually speak English all the time. Well, countries don't speak English. They actually speak their own language, and they pronounce the name of their country actually different than it's pronounced in English. So there isn't a correct and incorrect way in English. Secondly, and final point, you might be surprised that educated people who actually know about these topics pronounce Ukraine two different ways, Ukraine or Ukraine. So, yeah, you're Ukrainian. That's nice. So you know how to pronounce it in Ukrainian. But you know what? You're being rude. And I don't appreciate people being rude on the show. You decide to make a snarky comment to start the show. Keep it up and the mods will, will kiss you goodbye. So, no, I just don't. I don't want to start the show being angry and stuff. But I don't like people who are rude, especially if you're Ukrainian. You come to a guy who's been covering Ukraine for two years trying to help Ukraine. And your first comment is to write something incredibly rude and obnoxious. And your tone was obnoxious. You didn't just say, oh, hey, we pronounce things differently. You literally came and said, oh, this guy. Great. So, you know what? Mods, don't get rid of them yet, but next snarky comment, and they're gone. No, I just, I think it's rude. I, it's one of my pet peeves in life. Thank you, Elizabeth. I just, like, I think rudeness is gratuitous rudeness online. I've always said the internet, people think the internet, thank you, Marie, um, from a nice Ukrainian, people think the internet gives them permission to just be rude, and I've never understood it. You know what I mean? They, they will say things to you they would never dare say in person. You know, she would never go to somebody in person and say, she might in person say, oh, you know, the way we typically pronounce it is this. They might say that, but you wouldn't go up to somebody and go, oh, you. Anyway, I'll stop now. But I just, like I said, gratuitous rudeness online, I just always bothers me. Anyway, thank you, LWD. Okay, I'm letting it go. I need some chocolate. <laughs> I need some chocolate. I'll let it go. <laughs> so anyway, um, so yes, join our Saturday show, guys. We do the Saturday show for the paid monthly subscribers. So and feel free to subscribe. Some of the SNN folks are with us right now, Brandy and Lyle and others. And again, all of you guys, you monthly subscribers on YouTube. Thank you, LWD. So um, Ukraine, big attack today, big attack today. Uh, Ukraine attacked a Russian air base uh, across the border in Russia near Rostov. On my map, it's going to be kind of over here-ish. I'll say over here-ish. That gets you close enough, right? That's Ukraine, all of this is Russia. So more or less over here. Um, it was a big deal. It was a very big deal. Listen to this. Um, Ukrainian sources indicate that as many as 20, oh, thank you, LW, thank you, LWD. You're, you're making me feel better, I appreciate it. I see a couple other gifts there from Joyce Lynn and others, or Joyce Lynn. Um, so, uh, Ukrainian sources indicate that as many as 20 Russian servicemen were killed or wounded in an attack on a Mor Morozovsk, Morozovsk, I'm going to guess, airfield in Rostov. Up to eight aircraft were damaged, while as many as six were destroyed completely, according to the Ukrainians. 
Um, the airbase has been the staging post for Russian bombings on the front line since the beginning of the invasion. Um, I think this was from Sky News, actually. It's home to the 559th Bomber Aviation Regiment. With um, The unit has three squadrons of Su-34s, which are regularly used to bomb Ukrainian forces. That's a big deal. Thank you, Maddie. Uh, what's really... Oh, thanks, Vic. Okay, I, well, I... I checked before, of course, but that was where I saw it on Google Maps, so I extrapolated onto my map, so thank you. Um, this is a big deal. Um, eight aircraft being damaged, six destroyed completely, 20 Russian troops injured or killed. That's a big deal. Um, the Russians are not going to be happy. Apparently, they already launched a big air attack on Ukraine tonight. Big surprise. But um, what is interesting about it is this is Ukraine using its drones. Um, and it's kind of actually funny in a way um, because you know we've had the US in particular Germans too saying oh no 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 don't you dare use our weapons to attack Russia in Russia that would be bad so the Ukrainians said okay then I guess we'll just create our own drones and we'll attack Russia with our own drones and Ukraine's been doing that and they've been doing it quite successfully um, Ukraine expects to make something on the order of I think a million drones this year which is kind of amazing thank you running thank you Tony Shirley, sorry, Maddie, I missed some of you guys. Colin, Dawn, Adventures, Colin, Dawn, LWD, Jocelyn, I did mention you, I remember. Okay, I think I've got a number of you. LWD, Rose, okay, I've got many of you. Thank you, Cheryl, as well. Thank you, Monica. Um, so yeah, great news for Ukraine, but interesting because it shows, again, the drone attacks and how they're, they're getting more and more effective, probably because they're using more drones. I mean, that would be one. Actually, there's two things. One, they're using more drones, so it's getting harder for the Russians to sort of take them all on. Thank you, LWD. Secondly, and we know this uh, from an article I read recently, I read to you guys. Vlad has also confirmed it to me privately. Thank you, Maddie. That um, the Ukrainian drones are getting smarter. They're using AI and artificial intelligence to basically make it more likely the drones will hit their targets. You know, they're able to identify targets, uh, the drone itself. In other words, rather than just a human being directing the drone, the drone itself is getting smarter. They're not, they're not terribly smart yet. You know, they're not exactly, uh, what was it? What's the, um, what you would call it, Dine? What is it from, uh, from, from the Terminator? I'm forgetting the name of the, uh, the company. You know, they're not exactly, Star, Star, what's Stardine? What's it called? Help me out, guys. What's the Terminator company called? Skynet. What's, what's the Dyne, though? D-I-Y-N. It is Skynet. What's D-Y-N? Why am I thinking of Dyne? I was thinking something Dyne as well. Skynet. Okay, it's not exactly Skynet. Um, but the drones are getting smarter. Maybe Cyberdyne. Maybe that is what I'm thinking. Um, but the drones are getting smarter in able to identify the targets themselves. And what's important about that is the drone gets close to the target, right? What if it loses its connection? the Russians are able to jam it. Well, if the drone has got any, I don't want to say self-awareness, it's not self-awareness, but if the drone itself knows what it's looking for and is able to identify targets, um, thank you, who is that? Real quick, thank you, running. Even if the Russians are able to jam it, so now the drone can't communicate with the pilot, the drone itself can switch on and say, okay, I'm going to start looking for the targets that were pre-programmed in these last you know, minute or so of my flight. And it goes, oh, tank. It goes, oh, artillery gun. It goes, right, whatever. Uh, you know, it, it, uh, it knows what to go after. So very interesting. Um, the, oh, okay, a little bit more on this. So this was in build today. Now, tell me something, actually. I never really knew this either way, but I seem to recall the German publication Build. Did, did some of you not tell me that Build is not considered as reputable in Germany? I mean, we know of it here. Like, I know of the publication. But I, I wasn't, I know Die Welt is very good, but is Bild considered more tabloid or something for sort of the Germans or, or those of you who know Germany? I'm just kind of curious because this story came from Bild. Thank you, Java. Um, I know it always takes about eight seconds for it to catch up, uh, the lag between me speaking and you guys hearing it. So I always have to drag it out for a second until I, uh, until I can see your guys' comments. It's a tabloid? Okay, Karuna, thank you. No, but... Are they are they reputable at all? Like, or are they just don't? Because they were reporting um, that Ukraine is looking at drones that can go as far as 2,000 kilometers. Not very reliable. Okay, then I'll say the story briefly and we'll move on. But they were saying that um, Ukraine is looking at drones that can go 2,000 kilometers, which is like 1,200, 1,300 miles. Um, thank you, LWD. Which actually is not um, is not surprising because we already know Ukraine's got drones that can go a thousand kilometers, 600 miles. 
and we know the Ukrainians have said they've got drones that go farther. Um, yeah, Jason, it's build B-I-L-D. I mean, it's quite well known. It's just folks previously had said it's not like the Daily Mail? Oh, God. Okay, well, then I'm not going to cite Build if it's like the Daily Mail. That's funny. See, the Daily Mail, I know I will not touch. Okay, didn't realize that. Okay. And Yvonne, subscribed. Thank you, Yvonne. Um, if you're around, make sure to join us tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be here 11 a.m. Eastern Time U.S. Um, Bjorn, Build is terrible. Okay, we're not, we're not citing Build again. Th that's why I asked, because I vaguely remembered that being the case. Um, so the Russians, there is... Fighting, ugh, and I forgot to look on my map exactly where Chasif Yar is. Ah, shoot. Hold on, I'm going to pull this up. I didn't Google exactly. I'm going to, I know it's going to be near Avdiivka. Let me pull this up. Hang on. I'm going to pull this up so I can see. I like to show you on the map. Chasif Yar. Do, 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 which would probably mean northwest of Donetsk, maybe. Nope. Ah, oh, okay. Oh, Donetsk up by Kramatorsk. Oh, okay. So Chasiv Yar is going to be up here. So Donetsk is down here at Kramatorsk. So more or less up here where my finger is. That's Chasiv Yar. Um, that is a Ukrainian town where a lot of fighting is going on. Um, you know, there's some concern about the Russians possibly breaking through. Uh, the Russians, you know, the Russians are like naming towns they've taken. Nobody believes them. I mean, I don't even like to repeat what they say because there's... There's like literally no reason to believe the Russians. So unless NATO, you know, some really good publication, the Ukrainians confirm that a town is lost, I would never believe it from the Russians saying it. There's just zero reason to believe anything they say. Thank you, Java. Nonetheless, there's a lot of concern going on with the town of Chasivyar right now. And it's one that they fought over previously, which is bad. Um, because obviously, you know, it's a, it is another indication of U.S. weapons being cut off and the Ukrainians having a harder and harder time holding the front, which is, again, something we've been worried about. Now, speaking of U.S. weapons being cut off, um, there is a, a brewing drama. Thank you, Java, and thank you, LWD and Minda. Brewing drama here in the U.S. over uh, American funding for Ukraine. As you guys know, sorry, my nose is itching again. As you know, USAID got cut off about six months ago by the MAGA Republicans in Congress. Uh, Donald Trump demanded they cut the aid off, and they did. Um, the uh, Republican Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, who is very sympathetic to Ukraine, does not like the Russians. He called Putin a madman at a meeting last month. Um, he is the top Republican in the House of Representatives. Uh, the House of Representatives is run by the Republicans, so he'd be the guy running the House, the Speaker, we call it here in the States. But nonetheless, he's a MAGA guy. He's Donald Trump's guy. So Trump says don't fund Ukraine. He doesn't fund Ukraine. Well, as you guys know, thank you, Ellie, Trump did put out, I did not feel the earthquake, I wish I had, uh, Trump did put out sort of a statement maybe six weeks ago, maybe two months ago, saying that, you know, aid to Ukraine might be okay if it were a loan and not a gift. Well, that, that what's interesting about that is that, if this is true, by the way, because Trump, you know, Trump kind of goes in the wind. I mean, and, and I always say this because I don't think Trump cares about Ukraine. He, he's got his weird views on it because of his weird fixation on Russia, right? But he doesn't really care about Ukraine. So the fact that Trump would say, hey, let's give loans to Ukraine doesn't mean Trump really thinks we should give loans to Ukraine because he just doesn't care. So nonetheless, Trump saying it, though, is still good news because it means maybe, maybe he's OK with the aid going. Thank you, Meta Humor. If it's a loan. Uh, thank you, Pedro. Well, the Republican speaker had said recently, a couple days ago, that he's looking to bring up uh, the aid package next week when Congress is back in session because they're still on recess for the uh, Easter this week. And I saw a story yesterday, I think, that said that Johnson's now saying, well, it's not so clear when we're going to bring it up. Um, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is one of the top two MAGA uh, Republicans in Congress, I mean, there's a lot of them, but there's like two that are the big ones. He, she and the guy. And both of them are just like, woo, like out from outer space. Um, I mean, just really, really wild people. But she is particularly bad. She's the one, she's the one who was talking about California. You may have read this, California wildfires and whether they were caused by Jewish space lasers. That's who she is. She's that late. If you don't know what I mean, Google Jewish space laser 
<laughs> and you will know who she is. <laughs> She's a Republican member of Congress and really like, woo. AOC is different though. I know somebody said like AOC. I, I'm going to jump in on this just because AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, I don't like her. She's too far left for me. She's a socialist and she's a real socialist. I don't like her. Um, having said that, she's not crazy. Um, she's not a hater. She's not a conspiracy theorist. She also doesn't believe in Jewish space lasers. Um, they're not the same at all. They're not. Um, honestly, some of the other members of the left that associate with AOC, I would put a little more close. I might make some comparisons there. Possibly. But even them, Marjorie Taylor Greene is like on another planet of wildness. That's the thing. Um, but but AOC, there's no way. No, no, no. She's super liberal and she's way too liberal for me. But there's no way. She's not She's not crazy and she's not a hater. No. Um, she's just super liberal, which, you know, whatever, right? And she's gotten much better. Exactly what Blue Sky is saying. She's, she's very smart. You notice how she doesn't talk much. She doesn't get, when she gets out there, she says interesting things. She's learned not to be the bomb thrower that, that she kind of was before. Um, in any case, um, so uh, what was I going to say here? G -G -G -G. Oh, yeah. So <sighs> Marjorie Taylor Greene has threatened to basically bring down AOC. Are you kidding me? Mike, you don't need to like somebody to recognize they're smart. Newt Gingrich is smart. I don't like the man. I've met the man. I don't like him. He's very smart. Um, What's his face? Remember, what's his face from the early 1990s? The one that spoke at the Republican convention, Pat Buchanan. Pat Buchanan, horrible human being, racist bigot of a human being, this Republican who ran for president back in the 1990s. Thank you, Derek. Pat Buchanan, incredibly smart man, clearly. You don't have to be like nice or good or whatever to be smart. She's very smart. I don't think she's Pat Buchanan, but my point is, it, doesn't, it shouldn't matter to you, her politics, being able to recognize she's clearly a smart woman. I mean, the woman's intelligent. In any case, let's move on. I'm not going to get into silly, this is like schoolyard discussion level kind of stuff. You know, she's not smart because I don't like her. Give me, come on, we're not kids, right? Let's at least have a little more of an intellectual discussion about these issues. Um, so Marjorie Taylor Greene has basically threatened to remove uh, Mike Johnson from the speakership. <sighs> The Republicans in the House of Representatives have got a one-seat majority. They've got 218 members. They need 218 to have a majority. It's bad. Um, they also have a system in place where any member, thank you, Mustard, any Republican member of Congress can basically call for a vote of no confidence in the Republican Speaker. And they don't always do this. Well, they're doing it now. They're doing it now. So this already brought down the previous Speaker, right, last uh, October or so. And it dragged out, remember, it dragged out for almost a month where there was nobody running the Congress. I mean, nobody running the House. Well, they finally elect this guy, Mike Johnson. And what happens? Uh, he's got the same kind of thing hanging over his head where any Republican can say, I want a vote of no confidence and there's a vote of no confidence. Well, the problem is because Republicans have such a small majority, if, and I'm trying to think of the number, like how many Republicans would have to walk. Not that many Republicans would have to walk and vote no for Johnson to, to, lose, to lose his position. Um, it's, it's very bad. So it has made it very difficult for him to do his job because especially, which actually typically is what happens here. The MAGA wing is the one saying, we're going to bring you down. Thank you, Lamb Chop. Moderates don't threaten to bring you down. And this is maybe a, this is kind of a bad thing in politics, really. The very definition of being a moderate in politics, thank you, Eli, is you're not a flamethrower, right? You're not somebody who holds people hostage politically. Th that's moderates don't, they're moderate, right? They don't do that. The crazies do that, or maybe the, I should say the extremes do that. So the far left will do that. The far right will do that. Or in Republican terms, the MAGA right will do that. So you've got the MAGA people who have been trying to take advantage of this very, very fine majority in the House, very small majority, and constantly threatening Johnson and making it hard for him to pass anything. Because they're, so anyway, she's threatening to, to take him down again, take away his speakership. He apparently uh, had a call scheduled with her today. There's no details on the call, but she has said if he uh, brings up Ukraine for a debate next week and it passes, she's going to basically take him down as speaker. Um, and she might be able to. 
Um, now, it gets very com. I'm not even going to get into the details because it gets, as Yvonne just said, American politics is complicated. It's complicated even for Americans. Um, basically, if Democrats were to vote with Republicans, they could save the speaker. So he could basically beat Marjorie Taylor Greene if he worked out a deal with the Democrats. The problem is then he's saving his Republican MAGA speakership by getting Democratic votes and that poisons him in the eye of the MAGA people, right? So it gets, and you have to basically buy the Democrats. I mean, if you're going to get Democrats to vote for you to save a Republican speaker, what are you going to give the Democrats? Well, what he gives them is going to anger Republicans even more, at least the MAGA Republicans. Thank you, Courtney, for the gift. So there, there's even more complicated stuff here as far as what could happen. But even if he tries to, some of the more complicated stuff to save the legislation or save his speakership, it could get him into even more trouble. Yeah, it is a rock and a hard place. Exactly, T. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... Um, you obtained one limited emote from Subwave. Oh, I forgot about that. Okay, there's some weird, I don't even know what that is. There's some weird subscription uh, promotion thing on TikTok that I never understand. And apparently it just tried it. I don't know. I didn't see, but hey, whatever. <laughs> so thank you, whoever. If somebody subscribed, thank you. Oh, somebody did subscribe. User 8523. Uh, thank you. You must have, maybe you were the one. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so Viper, V Viper just wrote a super chat over at YouTube. Um, first, let's thank you for your efforts in bringing us current updates. You are welcome. Question, should other U.S. allies like us, and by the way, the way I do this with super chat questions on YouTube is I will immediately answer those questions um, as, a, as a thank you, as part of the deal, as for you guys supporting my work. So thank you. Should other U.S. allies like Australia be concerned of how they just left Ukraine hanging after promises made? Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, I wasn't sure what you meant by that. I thought you meant, should Australia be worried about Ukraine? You mean, which is interesting, you mean, should, Austra should other... Ukraine, ally of the U.S. Obvi I mean, obviously, right? We, we went all in to defend Ukraine. We then backed out, right? Our, our domestic politics got in the way. One political party just said, we're not helping, right? We're not, we, don't, we don't have a problem with Russia. We have a problem with one of America's allies, right? What does that mean for the rest of America's allies? Does that mean the rest of America's allies should be worried about whether America will come and defend them? Yes, it does. No, it absolutely does. Um, previous to this, thank you, Howie. Previous to this, I would not have worried, for example, about uh, the U.S. defending NATO. Now, thank you, Christopher, if Donald Trump were president, all bets are off. I have no idea if he would come and defend NATO. I suspect he wouldn't, um, to be honest. Uh, they might be able to pressure him, some of the Republicans, to do it. Thank you, Jen. Uh, and thank you, Roncano, for the uh, super, super sticker, I'm guessing. Um, so, yeah, um, Australia. Depends, right? The Chinese pull something with Australia. And you've got the, what is it, the ANZUS Treaty? Uh, Australia, New Zealand, U.S.? Chinese pull something. I don't know, go after one of your islands. I don't know, right? I, I mean, I don't know what the Chinese would necessarily do and you've pissed off Donald Trump and he doesn't come and help you. Or he wants a hotel. I don't know. I mean, in Australia, I, I don't know. Um, that is something we would have never considered before. We would have never considered an American president, Democrat or Republican, that would turn on our allies. An American president that wouldn't abide by American treaties, especially American defense treaties. Um, it doesn't matter if they're Republican or Democrat. Previous to Trump, all of them would have defended our allies. Now, I have no idea. And what's worse than Trump, he has made this a MAGA thing. You know, it's not just Trump. The MAGA people have bought into this isolationism of saying that, you know, America shouldn't be there abroad doing things with its military. Well, you know, that's nice if you're European or African or Latin American to think that way, but you're an American that thinks that way? I, I think that, that, to me, that's screwed up. Um, the other problem is there's this weird affection for America's enemies. Certainly Russia, not China. Um, you know, China, who knows, right? Um, I don't want to piss off our overlords here, but, you know, but China roundly not liked by a lot of uh, official American politicians, right? Russia, on the other hand, Republicans very like Russia, right? So it's scary. It's scary. No, I think it's very scary. I, I think it's very scary, you know? Oh, TG, I don't shut up because I'm going to ask people to get me <laughs> gifts because whenever there's a really bad troll... 
I'm going to do a gift, a gift, uh, a gift round. So if you disagree with that troll and don't want me to shut up, <laughs> feel free to give me. I'm going to keep talking anyway, but feel free to give gifts on TikTok, gifts on YouTube and uh, keep my work going. So thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Flower Lady. Thank you, Jen. I, I always the thing is, I love those people. Honestly, thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, LWD. Thank you, Java. Because, you know, I mean, thank you, Dawn. I just love that, you know, here's the thing. Thank you, Chazak. That I will never understand with the with the MAGA Republicans. Thank you, Adventures. Thank you, Monica. A lot of you guys now. Hazel, Java, John, crazy. At least be proud of who you are. I mean, listen to what I just explained. What I just explained wasn't even controversial. MAGA Republicans are isolationist. MAGA Republicans don't think America should be out there in the world doing things, including defending our allies. MAGA Republican doesn't like most of our allies, right? Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Snowblade. They have said this. They're proud of this. Thank you, Frank, from New Zealand. We love you. I still love you in New Zealand, right? I mean, what I don't understand. Thank you, Cheryl, again for that. And thank you, Cracker. I, I, I'm always kind of amazed. Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's a good thing that some of the MAGA get very upset when we publicly explain what their views are on domestic or foreign policy. Um, I mean, maybe it's a good sign that they get upset when we say you're isolationist, that you don't want to defend America's allies, because maybe it means some of the actual MAGA voters disagree to the point where it gets them angry. That's good, because I, ho I want you to be angry. I want you to speak up. Thank you, Blue Ariel. I want you to speak up and tell politicians that you think America should be involved in the world, that you think America should abide by its treaties and defend our allies. Thank you, Mustard. Thank you, Champ uh, Championess. So, but it's interesting to me when they get upset about, about things that typically the MAGA leaders are very proud of, you know? I, I mean, it's just and it, like, I mean, again, good, <laughs> good. I hope it gets you upset. Good, good. Speak out to, to our leaders and tell them that you disagree. That's good. Thank you, Marie. Um, ah, so, okay. So speaking of our leaders getting me annoyed, the U.S. is yet again, I'm going to do a little bit of a two-story thing on the U.S. telegraphing again, kind of our weakness in Ukraine. Thank you, Marie. And who is that? LWD. Thank you for the hands, LWD. Um, the um, Pentagon spokesman, Pat Ryder, says today, I'm paraphrasing, that the U.S. did not supply Ukraine with the means used by defense forces by Ukraine to attack oil refineries and other facilities on the territory of Russia. He came out on the last day and reiterated again. For, so Russia knows we had nothing to do with it. We didn't give Ukraine those weapons that they used to attack the oil refineries. We didn't give Ukraine the weapons they used you know, to attack the military base today in Russia. We seem very... And, and, and Blinken said this. I mean, we, we've had officials all week talking about, oh, my God, right? We had that article from a week ago of the Americans. Oh, my God, the, Biden doesn't want Ukraine attacking Russia. Oh, my God, the oil. Oh. Can we stop being so afraid? Could we stop telegraphing our fear to Russia every day? It, you know, the Biden administration, when I say we, meaning the Biden administration. I mean, I just like, what, what possible purpose does it serve? to have the Defense Department spokesman get up there and go, I know Ukraine's attacking oil refineries and military bases. We had nothing to do with it. We're not, we, we, and we don't approve of it. We don't approve of it. Like, first of all, do you think Russia believes you, right? Russia doesn't believe you. I mean, Russia doesn't believe us when we say, oh no, we didn't do this and that, right? I mean, because also, why would we lie? Why would we tell the truth, to be honest, right? If we were helping Ukraine hit Russia, we wouldn't tell them about it. So the fact that we deny it means nothing. So that's the first problem. Denying it gets you nowhere. What denying does get you is it makes you look scared. It makes you look scared of Russia. It makes you look like you really, really, really want Putin to understand. You really, really do that we're not trying to go after him. Well, guess what? If you're Putin and you hear that, you hear... Okay, so I'm hearing the Biden administration is scared. I'm hearing they're kind of, you know, wetting their pants over the fact that Ukraine's doing these attacks because they're afraid. Oh, my God, they're afraid of what I'll do. Vladimir Putin, they're afraid of what I'll do. Will I attack America? Who knows? Well, then I'm going to try to scare, if I'm Putin, I'm going to try to scare America even more because 
I just got the signal publicly that America is scared, that my administration is scared of me, me, me being Putin. Then I'm going to scare you even more because if I scare you more, maybe you'll back off even further. And maybe, again, the aid will never come back. I mean, I just, I don't see, thank you, LWD, I do not understand in what possible universe they think these comments help. Because again, even if you think, you know, right, I mean, he should say things like this. Russia's not going to believe us. <laughs> Why would the Russians believe us? It's just stupid. Hey, thank you, Roncano. Now, I don't know if you meant to have a, did you meant to have a question there, Roncano? Or if it was just a gift, thank you. If you meant to have a question, feel free to put one up there and then have folks remind me if you would. Because um, sometimes I don't see all the comments, but if you if you meant to, otherwise, thank you for the gift. Either way, uh, a little bit more on this House Foreign Affairs Committee. Thank you, LWD. Thank you, Jorge. So, uh, House Foreign Affairs Committee Chair Mike McCall, who's very good, um, solid conservative Republican, but I mean, doesn't matter. Uh, thank you, Raspberry. Thank you, LWD. On politics, on foreign affairs, he's a very straight shooting normal human being on foreign affairs. He doesn't play political games on foreign policy. He was trying to explain in an interview this week why it is he thinks that Secretary Blinken, who's our Secretary of State, is the one who actually is braver in standing up to Russia. He thinks the problem in our administration, which I'd heard before and told you guys, thank you, Andrew, is um, uh, what's his face? The, you know, Jake Sullivan. <coughs> who's the national security advisor to the president at the White House, that he's the one that's also afraid of Russia. Listen to this from, uh, from McCall, who's the House of Republicans chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee. He says, Jake is, he's overly cautious. He's very timid. And he's bought into this notion that, well, if we give them too much, if we give Ukraine too much, then Russia's going to use a tactical nuke on us. Well, most intelligence I've seen is they're not going to do that because that would be a game changer for everybody. Basically, Biden's top advisor in the White House thinks Russia's going to use their nukes if we give Ukraine too many good weapons. Now, again, we've talked about this before. That's ridiculous. Um, it's particularly ridiculous in the, like, the threshold is going to be longer range attack missiles, right? Really? I mean, we're about to give them F-16s, and that's okay. But if we give them attack missiles that go 200 miles instead of 100 miles, there's going to be a nuclear war. Why is that? Oh, the missiles can go farther. Okay, they can go farther. They can hit targets that are 200 miles away. Wow, that's so scary. Except, can't the Ukrainians already hit targets that are 200 miles away with their drones? Yes. Can't they do it with the British and French cruise missiles? Pretty much. Yep, I saw it, Amanda. Thank you. Yep, I'll, get, I'll try to get to it next. Um, right? Yes. So... In fact, the U.S. giving longer range weapons, for example, like attackums missiles the Ukrainians want and the defense experts say they need, would not be an escalation because the Ukrainians already have weapons that go that far. So what, I mean, that's what I'm saying. So on its face, the logic doesn't make sense that, oh, if we give these weapons, it'll be nuclear war. Second of all, as this guy, the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee said, like, on what basis is Russia going to use nukes for, against us? Forget it. If they use nukes against us, We've got our nukes. We would use it against them, and it would be the, it would be terrible. It would be the end of the world. Russia knows that they're never going to use nukes against us, right? Without us using them first, and we're not going to use them first for the same reason because we don't want Russia to attack us. So I I'm very suspicious of anybody who says, "Oh, both sides are ready to use nukes." I I'm very I don't I don't think the Russians are crazy. I think I think Putin is a very smart man. To you to talk what we talked about earlier, he's a very intelligent, smart, strategic leader. He's not crazy. He's not crazy. Um, and the second thing is, I don't want to get into our whole nuclear debate here because we've talked about it a lot, but there's no real defense reason why the Russians would use nukes in Ukraine. It just doesn't make sense uh, uh, from a defense perspective. Thank you, Crystals. Everyone, I mean, all the defense experts say, like, Russia wouldn't get anything out of it. It wouldn't help. Them. It wouldn't put them in a better position, right, if they used nukes. Final point, and McCall says about this, it would be a game changer. If the Russians used nuclear weapons, excuse me, in Ukraine, that's it. You'd have multiple NATO countries that I think would enter the war, right? I think the French potentially would enter. I think the Poles would definitely enter. I think the Baltic countries would definitely enter. And enter in what way? I'm not sure. Troops on the ground, weapons, men. I mean, I don't know. But I think, and I think, I think 
Biden would be hard pressed for the U.S. not to enter the war if Putin used nukes because it would be such a game changer, as McCall says. So as I always say, Jake Sullivan and Biden, and frankly, it's Biden. It's not like Jake Sullivan's the president. Biden's the president. He's the one doing this. Biden needs to explain to people why it is he's so afraid of Putin, because I don't get it. I mean, again, you know, sure, I don't have the intelligence, meaning the the CIA information he's got, but give me a break, you know? So, okay, Roncano, your question was, um, can I explain if Biden wins... House is Democrat, Senate Republicans. Can they pass current Ukrainian bill or have to start over? Okay, yes. So one of the uh, one of the possibilities for the election of the fall, A, obviously Donald Trump could win. Let's just pretend Donald Trump doesn't win, okay, that Biden remains president. Um, there is a strong indication that Republicans will win the Senate, the U.S. Senate, because so many races, so many Democrats uh, Democratic races are up. Republicans aren't. It just statistically looks like Republicans are going to take the, the U.S. Senate. It also looks like Democrats are going to take the House. I mean, it's it's a little early to say, but but as Roncano just said, you could very easily have a situation where Democrats who control the Senate lose the Senate and Republicans take over. Republicans who control the House lose the House. Democrats take over. So you end up with Democrats in charge of the House, Republicans in charge of the Senate. Well, Democrats in the House means aid for Ukraine, in principle, because they're on board. Republicans in the Senate means aid for Ukraine, because the Senate Republicans, at least right now, are very pro-Ukraine. Now, McConnell is stepping down, the current leader who's very pro-Ukraine. We don't know if the next guy or gal is going to be pro-Ukraine. But generally speaking, the Senate Republicans are much better. So both houses would be more likely to pass legislation, or not more likely, in the Senate they passed it anyway. Senate would be just as likely to pass legislation for Ukraine. House would be way more likely to pass legislation for Ukraine. Um, the question would be, it wouldn't be the same legislation only because um, when you introduce a bill, for example, and it doesn't pass yet, it's sitting there going through committees, it does that for the two-year period up until the next election. You then have the election in November, and then the new Congress starts in January based on the election in November. So in the election in November, some people lose, some people win, some new people come in. Well, those new people get sworn in in early January, and that's when the new Congress begins for another two years. So all the legislation that hasn't passed gets wiped out, at the beginning of a new Congress, and you start again. You have to offer new legislation. So, uh, for example, you would have to pass a bill in the Senate. The, there was a bill passed in the Senate. You'd have to pass another one, right? If, if in fact, the House doesn't pass a bill by the new Congress in January. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, they would have to start over. But again, start over doesn't always mean it wouldn't, it wouldn't go quickly. If the Senate passed it before, maybe they'd pass it again quickly. Who knows? Um, Yangoism has a super chat question. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. By the way, CNN did break news that Iran was planning a significant attack on the U.S. or Israeli assets. Officials say inevitable thoughts. Okay, I'd have to see the story. Let me pull this up. I, I saw this a couple days ago, the mention about Israel. I didn't see anything about Iran and the U.S., but then again, I wasn't really... Hang on a second. Iran, U.S., Okay, here we go. This is, oh, this is the last hour. Okay, hang on, guys. U.S. preparing for significant Iran attack on U.S. or Israeli assets in the region as soon as next week. Boy, Iran better watch it. I mean, doing it on Israel is bad enough. Doing it on the U.S.? Having said that, this is my fear about Biden. This is my, I mean, let me read the story first. But I, again, Trump, I am not a fan of. And I do not think Trump would be a good president on foreign or domestic policy. But Biden on foreign policy, he, he's got a weakness problem. Um, CNN from an hour ago, the U.S. is on high alert and actively preparing for a significant attack that could come as soon as within the next week by Iran targeting Israeli or American assets in the region, meaning the Middle East, in response to Monday's Israeli strike in Damascus, Damascus that killed top Iranian commanders, senior American officials tell CNN. Senior U.S. officials currently believe that an attack by Iran is inevitable, a view shared by their Israeli counterparts. The, governments, the two governments are furiously working to get in position ahead of what is to come as they anticipate that Iran's attack could unfold in a number of different ways and that both U.S. and Israeli assets and personnel are at risk. Um, let me see here. 
A direct strike on Israel by Iran is one of the worst case scenarios the Biden administration is bracing for as it would guarantee rapid escalation of an already tumultuous situation in the Middle East. Such a strike could lead to the Israeli Hamas war broadening into a wider regional contact. Um, Iran vowed to take revenge after the airstrikes. Um, just looking if there's anything else in here. That's all that's here. That's interesting. I've not seen that. Um, yeah, that's bad. I mean, what's bad about it is, I mean, obviously it's bad. I don't mean that. I don't, I don't mean to be flippant. What I mean is, as I said, if Iran attacks Israel, Israel will attack Iran. Israel has no problem attacking Iran and Israel will hit them hard. Biden will tell them don't hit them hard and the Israelis are going to go, you know, go F yourself, right? So that's, that's bad. And if the Israelis hit the Iranians, do the Iranians feel the need to hit back? Now, and then it becomes a back and forth. Having said that, you know, Israel has nukes. Israel's not going to use their nukes because I think Israel is a normal, sane country, but they do have nukes. Iran ought to watch it um, just for that reason. But second of all, Israel's got a lot of good weapons. Um, this would not be a happy thing for Iran. And as I said, if you want to guarantee that the, U, that, that the current divide that's starting to happen between Biden and Netanyahu, that that divide goes away, have Iran attack Israel and have it be significant because then the Americans are going to be like this with the Israelis. So, I mean, not helpful if you're somebody who thinks, which I even, even I feel to some degree, I mean, I support Israel, but, but I feel like they're taking advantage of us, frankly, not the Israelis, but the government. I've never liked Netanyahu. He's taking advantage of us and he doesn't care what we think. And maybe if he wants all this aid, we should start telling him, you know what? <laughs> maybe you should listen to us a little bit. Um, the hitting the American interests, <sighs> Here's the problem. If you're Iran, you're looking at Ukraine and you're saying Joe Biden's afraid of escalation. Joe Biden makes clear he's afraid of escalation every day. Every day he tries to tell the Russians how much he doesn't want a war with Russia because, oh my God, a larger regional war would be so dangerous. And then we read in the article, U.S. officials say the same thing. Biden does not want a regional war. He, it's his worst case scenario having Iran go to war with Israel. Well, that means if Iran attacks Israel or Iran attacks us, Biden's instinct, I fear, not I fear, not I fear, but Biden's instinct will be to try to tamp things down, to try to say, okay, Israel, maybe respond, but don't respond as much as you want to. Okay, maybe America, we have to respond, but maybe we respond a little bit more nicely. Like we don't hit Iran back as hard as they hit us because we're afraid of escalation. We're afraid of a regional conflict. I mean, literally, guys, thank you, Crystals. This is Ukraine all over again. Um, and I say Ukraine all over again, not because the politics are this. I mean, obviously, the, the totally different war going on and totally different reasons. Um, but Biden, Biden fears escalation. I, I do. I, I don't like him on foreign policy. I, mean, I really don't. Thank you, Biscuits. Thank you, Timothy. I think he's fearful in foreign policy, and he telegraphs that, which is very scary. Um, and I think the Iranians looked at it and thought, you know what, we can hit the Americans hard and we can hit the Israelis hard, and Biden's instinct is going to be, don't respond, and if you do, respond very nicely. I say nicely, meaning don't, you know, make your response smaller than you want it to be. So the Iranians go, we can survive because the Americans aren't going to want to get into a back and forth with us. No, it's bad. I think it's very dangerous. And I've said before from the beginning, not beginning, but well into the war in Ukraine, I was saying that I think Biden's sending a dangerous message around the world. And frankly, I'm thinking he's sending, I think he's sending a dangerous message to the Chinese as well, frankly. Again, Trump, who the hell knows what Trump would do? Trump would, Trump would go the opposite way, potentially, right? I mean, Trump would respond too much, probably to Iran. And then we'd have a wider war and it would be like, oops, now we've got a war in the Middle East between everybody. You know, so this is not to say Trump would be good, but I will deal with the president we have right now. And the president we have right now, I think, is kind of afraid of stuff. And I don't think it's safe. Um, yeah, I mean, Sepper, that's a tough question. Do you think Israel going to war with Iran would help get rid of Iran's oppressive government? I mean, right, maybe... <laughs> right? Maybe. I mean, who knows? I mean, that's the problem, right? Not to mention, you know, Iran's government's oppressive, but something, what was the number I had? Um, I'm forgetting his name, a really interesting guy when the sort of most recent revolution, not revolution, but the, the uprisings were going on about a year and a half ago with Iran. And we had a, a guy on the show 
who was talking about something like 30% of Iranians support the regime. I think it was 30% or something. You know, I, I, who knows? I guess the problem is just because Israel or the U.S. attack Iran doesn't mean the regime gets overthrown. Maybe people dig in. Maybe it builds support for the regime, right? Maybe the regime uses it to say, like Russia does, to say, if you're a domestic opponent, you're obviously with the bad guys who are attacking us, right? Look what Russia's doing with the terrorist attack. They're trying to blame it on Ukraine, on France, on Britain, on America. They're trying to use a, an attack by somebody else from abroad to basically shore up support at home. And by the way, what Russia does too. Russia points to all the other you know, pro-democracy groups and says, you know, you're to blame for this. You're to blame for the instability we're having. You're to blame to putting us at risk. The, the, the same thing the Iranian regime could potentially do. They could use this to crack down. So, I mean, but who knows? I, I you know, I guess I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be prepared for that to be the first thing that happens, put it that way, that the Iranian regime gets overthrown because Israel, you know, goes after them, you know. But I don't know. Scary stuff, though. Wow, that's wild. Okay, let me look. A couple more. I want to look. Well, since we've been talking, I don't want to go through all the stories here. Um... Let me just look really quick. De -de 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 -de. Hang on, guys. Um, de -de 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 -de. I was going to say, two German construction companies are helping the Russians rebuild Occupy Mariupol. That's really bad. The Knauf uh, Industrial Group. This was something I think that Moto guy tried to tell us yesterday and we didn't understand what he was telling us. Um, that's really bad. Um, the... Uh, beep, 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 beep. I'm looking here. The uh, a little bit about Russian disinformation. I will tell you this really quick: the Russian embassy in South Africa and the Russian embassy in in the UK are the two sort of nastiest Russian embassies. They're the ones who who are the leaders in pumping out sort of propaganda from the Russian embassies. They're nasty. It's 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 propaganda. It's lies, and they're nasty about it. Russian embassy in South Africa falsely claims that Zelensky bought Highgrove House from King Charles. I don't know what Highgrove House is. It must be one of the king's residences. Brought one of the king's residences, King Charles in England, for, for 20 million pounds, citing a, quote, British media outlet. The British media outlet that they claim that proves Zelensky did this, that like he's a millionaire using all the money, isn't a British media outlet at all. It's a Russian propaganda outlet that the Russians set up in Britain. It's called the London Crier, okay? It's a Russian disinformation website that uses AI to publish fake stories. This is something the Russians have done since the time of the KGB, um, back in the 1980s. They would, in the 1970s actually, back then, they would pay off journalists, especially in Latin America, but especially Africa. They'd pay off journalists, and Radio Moscow would say, um according to, you know, Radio Nigeria or whatever, the Israelis or the Americans are doing blah, 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 right? And Radio Nigeria is reporting it because the KGB literally paid the journalists that are working for them <laughs> in Radio, Ni I'm breaking up Radio Nigeria. It was some African, you know, news publication. The, the KGB would literally pay them to produce fake story. They'd give them the story and say, publish it. Well, once they published it, then Moscow on Radio Moscow, which was like the Voice of America, right? The international radio, like the BBC, Crystals. Moscow wouldn't be the one accusing Israel of bad things or America of bad things. They would simply be quoting the African paper, saying what's going on in Africa. Except, of course, the African paper was fake. Well, in this case, it's the Russian embassy in South Africa putting out a story citing the British media, except it's not the British media. It's literally the Russian government's own propaganda machine with a website in the UK, a website that, it's not in the UK, of course, a website that claims to be in the UK. But this is sort of the anatomy of lies when you deal with this kind of stuff, right? Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you, because this came from the Russian embassy in the UK, which I said now that the second story is the other really bad place. Thank you, Crystals. Um, listen to this. The Russian embassy in the UK is quoting the Russian government. Thank you, Timothy. Putin's government as saying that the Bucha massacre, right, when the Russians went in and killed a horrific number of civilians um, in Bucha, which is a town just northwest of Kiev, uh, the beginning of the war, 
that it wasn't a Russian massacre at all. The Ukrainians killed their own people and they did it in order to, um, you know, blame those poor innocent Russians. Listen to this. And then I'm going to tell you why we know it's, that's a lie. Um, Ukrainian, uh, Russian embassy in the UK. Maria Zakharova, who is, I believe, the foreign ministry spokeswoman on the Bucha massacre. April 3rd marks two years since the Zelensky regime and its Western handlers staged a bloody mass murder of the people of the town of Bucha. The provocation was a put-up job, she says. Put-up job meaning false flag, meaning fake attack. Like they did it in order to blame somebody else. And a staged provocation, which was clear from the outset. So, I mean, guys... It's, again, tough to tell you the things the Russians did in the town of Bucha. And it was the first really big, horrific, horrific um, uh, civilian massacre of the Russians, uh, killing civilians in Ukraine on purpose. Um, uh, the, the Russians occupied Bucha for something like three or four weeks. I, I shouldn't say three or four weeks. It might have been four to five weeks. From the beginning of the war, the Russians come down. Right? Russians invade. February 24th, 2022. They come down within a short period of time. They come down to outside Kiev and they, they occupy towns like Bucha, which is more, here's Kiev, the capital, more or less around here, right? While they're occupying it for about a month and then the Ukrainians push back and kick the Russians out. Remember from all of this north area, Ukraine gets back. So Ukraine's able to push the Russians out. When they push the Russians out of Bucha, the Ukrainians come to town, Ukrainian military. They bring media with them and they uncover horrific numbers of civilian massacres. Um, Bucha is the town that showed when they came, and we've seen the video, we've seen the pictures, 20 like dead civilians on the main street, and they were all dead, men, women, children. Um, there's a famous picture of a man on his bicycle, just lying dead, an old man you know, with his little hat on, his little suit, dead on his bicycle. They shot him on his bike. Um, they started interviewing women, talking about sexual violence and how they, their mothers, their daughters were all violated by Russian troops. They would bring the men in to watch, right? Them do this. Their sons would have to come in and watch them do this. Um, they would go, one woman, she, 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 we saw the video of, I mean, she said this previously, but I saw the video of her last week, standing in front, she's in front of her house, standing in front of the body of her son, who's dead, the Russians killed him, and explaining how the Russians went door to door in Bucha and knocked on the door and said, any men inside, come out. And if the men were between the age of 18 and 60, she said, they shot them in the head. And she said, this is my son behind me. My husband was already in his 60s. They let him live. Anybody else, they shot. Um, let me tell you a little more of why we know this is true and why we know it was the Russians and not the Ukrainians, okay? As we said, lots of eyewitnesses. The United Nations um, High Commissioner for Human Rights uh, in, uh, interviewed a number of the witnesses and said that they've recorded at least 50 extrajudicial killings of civilians in Bucha. Extrajudicial meaning the military soldiers just said, let's kill you. They didn't even go to court. They didn't do anything. Okay. Um, I think the most important evidence was the New York Times story, which Webadeb is, I think, hinting at or, or re referencing. The New York Times is able to pull up satellite imagery, right? Because satellite imagery right, is everywhere now, right? New York Times pulls up satellite imagery of when the Russians, we know Russia occupied up until March 31st, um, from like early March to March 31st, they occupied Bucha. So the New York Times pulls up all the satellite images from that period, and they pull up that one main street with all the dead bodies. And again, famous photos of, of the Ukrainian troops coming into this town on April 1st and seeing the bodies and seeing the burnt out cars. And the New York Times used those photos and was able to find satellite photos going back to around April 19, uh, excuse me, Mar March 19 or March 21st, right? This is April 1st when we uncovered the massacre. So two weeks before or so, March 19th or March 21st is the first time looking at the satellite photos that you see the burned out cars and the dead bodies on this street. The New York Times was able to use the satellite imagery to literally prove that these bodies were on the street and appeared between March 19th and March 21st. And the same bodies were on the street until the Ukrainians arrived. Why is that important? Because March 19th to March 21st was the middle of the Russian occupation of Bucha. The Ukrainian military did not invade Bucha and massacre the civilians and leave them there for two weeks. The Russians were occupying the town. There was no way for the Ukrainian military to even get in there and do anything, okay?
I mean, that is the degree. And again, not just not just the New York Times. Bellingcat, which is a big investigative body, found drone images showing Russian forces firing on the civilian bicyclist. The famous photo of the guy on the bicycle lying dead. Bellingcat was able to find the drone video of the guy getting killed by Russian troops like a block or two away. And I've seen the video. I remember when it first came out and you see him riding his bike and like a Russian, it was like a tank, I think even, opening up from a block away and killing him, okay? Um, Associated Press and PBS did an investigation using security camera footage and cell phone records to prove which Russian forces were involved. The AP, I remember reading this story, the AP and PBS literally got the names of the Russian troops who did this by looking at cell phone, looking at their cell phones and the towers because the Russian cell phones, guess what? They tapped into the Ukrainian towers, right? Anyway, you get, you get what's going on here, okay? I just think it's important to say because if the Russians are going to do something as disgusting as claim that, you know, they're, they're potentially their biggest massacre or, the, or one of the biggest massacres we know of in Ukraine was really done by the Ukrainians and the Americans, um, it, I mean, it's disgusting and we know it's disgusting, but there's ample proof, not ample proof. There's, it was proven long ago to the point that we now even know the Russian troops who did the massacre. Um, but again, and this will be the last story I talk about, it is important to see these stories not just because they're infuriating, but because they tell us who we are dealing with. This is who the Russians are. This is who the, these kind of comments, these kind of claims, these kind of actions like they did in Bucha and these kind of claims about, in essence, laughing about what they did in Bucha and mocking it and blaming it on everyone else. This is who the Russians are. And anybody, I always say this to anybody who's a lot younger than me, the war in Ukraine has given you a very good window into why so many people older than you have a problem with Russia and have a problem with the Soviet Union, which was the precursor to Russia. Russia is the follow-on state to the Soviet Union. And why, just that, why they've got a, I, I will leave it at that because I know YouTube would be fine with this, but our overlords would not be happy if I criticize Russia too much. You know, it's their allies. Um, but very just, yeah, yeah. Anyway, just horrible stuff, just horrible stuff. All right, let's hang and talk, guys. Hang and talk, hang and talk. Mm. Oh my God, the red nail polish, I forgot about that, yeah. There's a famous photo of a woman um, dead and her hand had just been manicured and beautiful red nail polish like sticking out of the dirt of her hand. And even worse, uh, not worse, but thank you, Robert. The woman who, who did her nails recognized her nails and came forth and said, I know who this woman is. And so they even got the story of who the woman was. I mean, it was just a you know horrible, thank you, Super Hornet, just horrible. Um, you know, anyway. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, guys. So what else is going on? Thank you, Dale, for the roses on TikTok. Appreciate that. Oh, and the, and the cat scratch. Who is that? Booty. Thank you, Booty, for the cat scratch. Appreciate that. Um, I doubt there's any Ukraine to join NATO news. And I do, Lars, there's no Ukraine to join. Biden doesn't want them to join NATO. <laughs> Putin will get angry. Hey, he doesn't want them to join NATO. Second earthquake around 6 p.m. in New Jersey. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, we felt no. There was a big earthquake uh, in the New York City area today. And um, I felt nothing here, unfortunately. I keep wanting to feel an earthquake. I keep missing earthquakes. Um, they, have, they haven't, David. Uh, David says, what do you think of a, US, of a U.S. general saying Russia has rebuilt their military? I have a hard time believing any normal U.S. general said that. I have a hard time believing any, I mean, a normal U.S. general or a crazy U.S. general, because there's some crazy ones out there that retired. I'd be very surprised. Uh, thank you, Booty. Doesn't mean Russia's not dangerous, but they haven't rebuilt their military. Um, well, I leave on Sunday for Chicago. I will be in Chicago all week. And then I was thinking I left Friday, but I was being stupid. My plane actually leaves Friday morning, meaning Thursday night. So I'm not going to be around Friday. So, so I thought my last show would be Friday. Possibly my last show at best is going to be Thursday. Let's see. <laughs> um, maybe we'll do a hangout because Thursday later in the evening, I'm leaving. So, um, so we'll have to see. We'll have to see. And then Thursday I leave for Asia and I'm gone for two weeks. till the Friday, two weeks later. 
Not downtown Chicago. Nope, suburbs. So thanks, Rambo. Russia being in a war economy? I mean, I don't know enough about the economics of it. Supposedly, Russia hasn't really built up enough of a war economy from what I've read. But, but you know, having said that, they're doing more. You know, they're, I mean, they're, they're certainly doing more to support their military. But I don't, I don't know enough about it. I don't know enough about it. But I think I had read that Putin really hadn't put them on a war economy, really. Um, Stephen Colbert. <laughs> I wish you were Stephen Colbert, but that's very cute. Um, anyway. Uh, um, yes. Oh, I'm pretty sure Terry. Actually, Terry asked a funny question. That's really funny. The U.S. and Canada have got to be included. I've got to be included. Terry says, if someone attacked, of course it's included. Yes, absolutely. Terry says, if someone attacked Hawaii, could the U.S. invoke Article 5 of the NATO Charter, even though it's outside the boundaries of NATO? It's not. Hawaii is the United States. It's not outside the boundaries of NATO. And become a state post, oh, became a state post-NATO creation. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. That's very funny. Uh, thank you, Andre. I, I don't, I don't think there's any there's any possibility of that being an issue. I would think any change in the in the European borders between NATO's formation at the end of 40s and now, you know, there's no way Hawaii is not in NATO. No way. No way. That's true? That can't be true. That can't be true. Because th think about this, right? New York, in other words, it doesn't have to be Europe. We know that. Thank you, Hazel. 9-11... We invoked uh, Article 5 and we, you know, in other words, an attack on the U.S. Yeah, that's not the question, though. The question isn't whether the Hawaii is the U.S. The question is claiming that since NATO already existed and Hawaii became a state afterwards, does that mean Hawaii isn't included in the NATO charter? Um, what you're really asking is what is the what is the legal language in the NATO charter with regards to changing borders? So that's what I'd want to see. But I'm going to almost guarantee you that there'd be no problem. You know, um, I'm going to guarantee you. Oh, no, that no, I did not read that was a troll. OK, guys, that's a troll. I did not know that was a troll talking point. Oh, ah. the person saying don't cry. It's a it's a fake talking point. Um, this is funny. This I was I'll, I'll let one of the mods deal with it. That person gets the boot. Thank you, Andre. Um, I remember I told you guys. The trolls, the Russian trolls are very bad at this. And they come and they're handed, they're literally handed talking points or emailed them or whatever. And they drop in and they just literally read the talking points. But I think these guys don't even speak English and they just dropped in. So they, they say things that don't make sense. Like this person said, don't cry. We're talking about the NATO charter and what the legal language says about countries expanding their borders and whether what the process is for an expanded border to be covered by the NATO charter. I'm pretty sure that was not exactly a cry. <laughs> I'm really not crying about the question about the specific legal language in the NATO charter. <laughs> you know what I mean? They just don't, they just don't, you know. Anyway, that's a fascinating question. Look, I'm sure, hold on, hold on. Nobody should believe that Hawaii isn't covered without, without, I'm going to pull this up right now. I guarantee you it's simply based on the, um, it's simply based on uh, the NATO treaty and what it says about expanding our territories. Of course, you know what? It immediately came up. I started writing, is Hawaii covered? And immediately came up on Google by NATO. CNN, people tend to assume Hawaii is part of the U.S. and therefore it's covered by NATO, he says, but he concedes the tip off of the alliance's name. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Sweden becomes the newest member. President of the Pacific Forum think tank in Honolulu says people tend to assume Hawaii is part of the U.S. and therefore it's covered by NATO. But he concedes the tip off is in the alliance names the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Oh, Hawaii is, of course, in the Pacific. And unlike California, Colorado or Alaska, the 50th state is not part of the continental U.S. that reaches the North Atlantic. The argument for not including Hawaii is simply that it's not part of North America. The exception is spelled out in the Washington Treaty, the document that established NATO in 1949, a decade before Hawaii became a state. While Article 5 of the treaty provides for collective self-defense in the event of a did-did-did-did, limits the geographic scope. 
An armed attack on one or more of the parties is deemed to include an armed attack on the territory of any of the parties in Europe or North America, Article 6 says. It also says any island territories must be in the North Atlantic, north of the Tropic of Cancer. Okay, a U.S. State Department spokes. This is fascinating. A U.S. State Department spokesperson confirmed that Hawaii is not covered by Article 5, but said Article 4, which says members will consult when the territorial integrity, political independence, or security of any member is threatened, should cover any additional states. Wow. Okay, for instance, NATO did not join founding member UK. Uh, 1982 war with Argentina after Argentine troops invaded the Falkland Islands, a disputed British territory. Okay, that's fascinating. That's fascinating. Wow. Okay, I did not know that. That's crazy. I'm, I'm, so it's not really a matter of it being new. It's a matter of it being... So the issue isn't that it wasn't a, a part of the U.S. when the treaty was signed. The issue is that it is not in the North Atlantic, it is not in the North Atlantic or attached to a part of the U.S. in the North Atlantic. So now Alaska, Alaska was around the same time. When did Alaska become a state, guys? Alexa, when did Alaska become a state? Alexa, when did Alaska become a state? 1959. That's what I'm thinking, Chaz. Like, yeah, that's what I was going to... Okay, Alexa's being very... Oh. Okay, only took you 10 minutes. Alexa, stop. 1959. So the question becomes, well, it's not North America. Hawaii is North America, too. <laughs> the question is, is Alaska connected to the Pacific, to the, to the Atlantic? It's not contiguous. Alaska is not the continental U.S. Is it a, I mean, is it or the continental U.S.? I guess you'd call it. I mean, it's not connected. Alaska's in the Pacific. At least California's connected. You know, Ireland is not a member. No, no, no. Let me just look for Alaska really quick. Um, I mean, I'm happy to accept if they are, but it's an interesting question. Um, this is fascinating, guys. I never knew this. At first, I was thinking that's a crazy question. Hawaii is, of course, in the Pacific. Unlike California or Alaska, they, they claim Alaska is not part of the continental U.S. Okay, they're claiming it's part of the continental U.S., even though it isn't connected to the U.S. Okay. So if we had territory in Argentina, would that be? Because it's, it's well, or does the Panama Canal invalidate it, right? No, this is a very interesting, it, being in North America isn't really the point. Hawaii is in North America too, isn't it? Or is it not? I don't know. Also, being in North America isn't the point. It's got to be in the North Atlantic. And it's connected. It's not connected, though. It's connected through Canada. If it's connected, then, then, then Guatemala is connected too. So if we had territory in Guatemala, it would be covered. I mean, except, well, it's not north of the, it's got to be north of a certain parallel. Anyway, I, I mean, I believe, I believe Alaska's covered, but it's, it seems kind of weird argument. Guam's not going to be, no. Um, interesting. All U.S. territories are not covered. No, no. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, this CNN story is from the other day, so we're going to assume it's true. Or not true, but correct. Very interesting. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Did not know. Huh. Fascinating. Um, beep, 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 beep. Okay. Wow. Okay. I'm blown, I'm blown away by this. Wow. Poor Alaska. Oh, well. Did Trump get rushed to the hospital for real? Somebody's claiming that, but let me see. Let me, although I'll see it on Twitter, too, if it's true. Nope. Trump media stock sinks to post-merger low. Trump media is a scam, and people buying its stocks are dope, says Barry Diller. A lot of Trump stories, none of them about that. I mean, it could be true. I'll look at Twitter. Twitter will have the update from sources I trust on Twitter. Uh, one second here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oops. 
no, home. One moment here. God, I hate Twitter, because Twitter like no longer will actually give you the updates. Breaking news. Twitter will no longer give you breaking updates because they mix everything. Like they mix all the stories, so you never can get like the story on time. Let me I'll do a quick look at CNN here while we're while we're hanging. Um deep -a -deep -a -deep. Yeah, because the Twitter stuff stuff from ten hours ago. I mean No, nothing yet. No, uh, there's nothing on CNN yet, which is always interesting because CNN usually like delays a little bit before they pick stuff up like this. Well, yeah, people. Are, I just saw people talking about the aftershock. That's funny. About an hour ago, yeah. Ah, well, not seeing about anything about Trump right here, so we'll see. We'll see. Um. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the hair was cut a couple weeks ago off free, but thank you. It kind of isn't behaving very well lately, even because it gets short and it just does things. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> um, is there going to be a conflict in Israel and Iran? Maybe. Just learned. Maybe. Um, yeah, so nothing, still nothing on Trump here, <laughs> Matthew. Um, All right. Yeah, I'm looking at anything on the Trump story. I'm not seeing anything on the Trump story. Oh, nope, nope, nope. No, I'm surprised CNN wouldn't jump on this. Yeah, that's the new filing and stuff. It's not anything about him being rushed to the hospital, so who knows. Um, anyway, all right, what else, guys? Yep, not seeing anything here. Not seeing anything here. Uh, well, we can wrap up soon. We're 20 minutes after the hour. Oh, thank you, Annie, for the ears. <laughs> the ears and the uh, the trunk. Uh oh, Sasha's going. Sasha's got water, I think. Yeah, she's okay at the moment. Um. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, Hawaii covered under Pacific alliances. Yeah, I guess so. Oh boy. Oh boy. We're not doing Discord now. Now it's too late. I I don't like starting Discord at this hour. I don't mind going over there, but twenty after is already too late. I've been talking for an hour and 20 minutes. I can't talk longer. <clears throat> I don't mind going over at seven o'clock, but because I can feel my voice has been a little raspy lately too. I don't want to, I don't want to mess it, but we should have, although today went long, but yeah, almost a hundred. Oh, yeah, we'll, okay. We'll wait till we hit a hundred thousand on TikTok. Tap the screen guys. Um, uh, oh, we've got auctions. Ah, I put new auction stuff up. So I did put new auction stuff up. Um, it's been an hour and 20 minutes, Sir Pachi. Not, yeah, not in the East Coast. It's not. Thank you, Nicholas. Um, I put new auction stuff up. We've got some cool stuff. The way I'm going to do the auction, somebody had recommended, which I think is a good idea. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Doug. Uh, while I'm gone, I'm going to keep putting auctions up every week. I've already, like, taken pictures and put them up and everything. But I am going to mail them out when I'm back. So nothing's going to be mailed out. Oops, the dog wants water. Nothing's going to be mailed out till after May 8th. So just be aware. And I'm putting it in each auction item and saying it. Oh, God, the dog wants water. But just be aware with the auctions that stuff won't be sent out for a month. Um, so, whoops. All right, coming back, coming back. All right. But, yeah, stuff won't be sent out for a month because it, that way I don't have to bring it with me to Chicago, and it's, it does make life easier. But, anyway, uh, let me show you. I will show you four of the auction things that I think are very cool. So we get cool stuff from Ukraine. And I'm going, well, Chicago to see mom and then going to Asia for two weeks, Singapore and Indonesia. Um, the, uh, we, we auction off cool stuff from Ukraine that I, uh, that I then uh, basically send half the money back to Ukraine for various charity work we do, et cetera. And then half of it goes to support my work because I do this full time. And it pays the bills, just like your guys' gifts do. So thank you for the gifts. Keep them coming. Um, first up, Vlad got these. I think they're totally cool. Thank you, Aiden. They're, they're handmade socks. Um, I mean, they're really cool. They're hand-woven socks from Ukraine. The, um, they're really nice. I mean, you can, like, when you look inside, you can really see that they're, like, hand-woven. Um, they're beautiful socks. They're wool. I mean, I can tell they're wool by the feel. You know, the Ukrainian trident, Ukrainian colors and Ukrainian trident. 
Um, the one thing is I tried them on over my socks, so don't worry. I'm a nine and a half, they're small. These are probably a nine or more likely an eight and a half American, I would say. I would say these are an eight and a half. Um, the nine was too, I could get the nine on because they stretch, but the nine was too small. You could tell by the heel. Uh, I said, not the nine, not, excuse me. These were a little too small in the heel for me. Um, and I'm a nine and a half. So they could be a nine. I think they're an eight and a half. I think they're an eight and a half. So, so check these out. Um, three more things or two more things, or three more things. We've got the Motanka kit, which I just love these. This is a handmade doll that the kit is to make the doll. And oops, the kit is to make the doll. And they are these traditional Ukrainian dolls that are considered protectors of the home. And they're based on, um, I'm gonna turn this off because they're clearly not saying anything about Trump. Um, I mean, not about Trump in the hospital. They are based on the idea of somehow reaching out to your ancestors and your ancestors help protect you. And the women would get one of these when they were married and they would put it in the crib with their baby when the baby was first born. And it somehow brought the protection of the ancestors. So they're called Motanka. Come on in, Sash. They're called Motanka. But this is, and this, Vlad got a number of these, but you can see the doll. And the doll does not have a human face. Typically the face has a cross or something similar. Because if it, has, if it has eyes, it's considered dangerous because it can like suck your soul or something. Anyway, I just think this is very cool. Um, two more things. One is a Ukrainian hot plate. This is a handmade hot plate. Vlad got these again in the, I think the Carpathian or Transcarpathian Mountains. And it's got two different sides. It's juniper wood, which actually smells really nice. Vlad says juniper. And Vlad said, what's nice about these is when you put the hot food, the hot, you know, the hot uh, uh, cooking utensil on here, because it heats it up, it gives off a smell. It gives off a smell, which is nice. So I thought that was kind of cool. Terry, um, not Terry, whoever was saying only men, who knows? Um, Susan, uh, those are the socks. There's two pairs of socks. I'm a man. They fit me like a man's eight and a half. I don't know. Do women wear men's socks? Uh -huh. Are socks unisex? I don't know. I'm just telling you I'm a man, so I have a man's foot. <laughs> I have a nine and a half. They were too small. Although I was able to pull them up, they were too small. They're probably an eight and a half man's or a nine man's, U.S. man's. Um, maybe eight and a half. So anyway, this is the hot plate that's really cool. And finally, and this is my favorite, Vlad got two T-shirts, a medium and a... I've got to look, actually. I've, I've got to look again. I think it's a medium and an extra large, I think, are the two T-shirts. Let me look. Yeah, this one's the extra. Medium and an extra large. Baby Yoda Drogu wearing the Ukrainian trident on his chest. And I remember seeing these in Ukraine and thinking they were so cool. And I think I did. I told Vlad, I was like, you've got to get these. I just think that is the coolest freaking T-shirt ever with Drogu wearing the Ukrainian trident. And I mean, those of you who know, we auction off we auction off the, uh, the, you know, the Ukrainian tridents. I've, I've got several of those, the, the military, you know, the military thing. So that's very cool. Uh, this, and we've got extra large and medium and the winner can pick which size. I tried on the extra large. It's a real extra large because I'm between a large and a medium. Um, you can bid on these, Kelly, over at our Discord. I guess I didn't say that, did I? Over at our Discord community. Um, it's... Uh, on TikTok, you can find our Discord on TikTok by going over to um, my profile on TikTok. Look for the link in the profile. So you look for the red triangles pointing down. That's pointing to a link. Click that link. And like the fourth or fifth thing down, it mentions Discord. So click it and you got it. Oh yeah, I ship. Basically, I'll ship anywhere you pay shipping on the auctions. So I ship anywhere because you pay shipping. The only thing is UK is not cheap. It's so like for a T-shirt, I wouldn't be surprised if UK is twenty-five or thirty dollars, because it's at least it's horrible shipping to the UK. <laughs> so just be aware, right? Um, but uh, but yeah, I'll ship anywhere. I'll ship anywhere. Thanks, Kelly. Um, but uh, but yeah, so check out the Discord. You guys can check it out at erovosis.com. Same link. Pull it up and then just scroll down to the fourth or fifth item that says Discord community. Hit the link and it takes you there. Um, you know, free account on Discord free to join our community. You just have to kind of click I join and there's a verification thing you got to do. Make sure you do the readme. 
Um, and then the only thing to remember is the auctions are broken into two parts. One is VIP and one is public. The public auction is for everybody. The VIP auction is for our monthly subscribers for everybody but TikTok because TikTok is broken. TikTok's connection to Discord has been broken for the two years that I've been using it. They tried to fix it a year ago and were unsuccessful. So sadly, you know, nothing I can do. Bedford, yes, I did mention it because a number of you guys chimed in and said there was a second earthquake in California, in, uh, in um, New Jersey again tonight at six o'clock Eastern time US. And I also saw on TikTok, on, yeah, on Twitter, a number of folks I follow mentioned it. Yep, 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 yep. Exactly, Maddie, I do have the best hair. Anyway. So yes, yes, for VIP, you'd have to subscribe on YouTube or elsewhere, exactly. Uh, does somebody want to, well, actually, I'm probably signing off anyway. I was gonna say, you could tell First Century that the sound, uh, they leave and come back to get the sound. The only problem is we're almost done with the show, so I hate to sort of have them leave and come back and then we're not here, you know? Anyway, well, sometimes individuals can't get the sound. Yeah, they have to kind of leave and come back. All right. Yes, I love my little, my balcony, my plant. My pla I was checking the plants today, but somebody mentioned my plants. The, um, my irises, both of my iris, I've got three irises actually. Two of them have buds coming up, beautiful irises, but they've got the buds coming up and both of my peonies, well, my one peony plant is now really tall. It's got buds, which of course won't bloom until I'm gone. The irises won't bloom until I'm gone. And my second peony only has little things, which might bloom before I'm back, let's see, let's see. I'm not convinced, I'm not convinced, so. But we shall see. But it always, my best flowers always bloom when I'm gone, which kind of sucks, so what do you do? What do you do? Um, well, no, someone claimed Trump was in the hospital, but there's absolutely nobody backing that up. So it might be true, but I would not believe it until somebody comes out and backs it up because it's nowhere online. Um, you know, that's why you shouldn't believe things people say, because. Again, might be true, but but there's no proof of it yet. So, you know, um, yep, still looking here. Yep, nope, nope, just looking really quick. Nope, 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 nope. All right, guys, I think I'm going to sign off. I know I love my plants. Yeah, love my plants, but they're doing very well. So, all right. I am going to sign off, guys, and try to relax now since I was busy all day trying to get the auction stuff and everything else. And then tomorrow we are doing our hangout for the paid subscribers. So on TikTok, any of you SNN TikTok monthly subscribers, join us at 11 a.m. Eastern Time U.S. right here tomorrow morning. Uh, Vlad may join us from Ukraine. He often does. And for the rest of you, join us. Obviously, YouTubers can join us on YouTube. The rest of you can join us on Discord. So anybody, YouTube, Twitch, Kofi, um, what's the other one? Discord itself, any of you guys subscribers monthly, you can join us over on uh, on Discord, all right, guys? All right, thank you, guys. Um, Lee, I mean, you know, the problem is YouTube, TikTok takes a lot. YouTube takes a lot less, a lot less. And YouTube, you can also become a VIP member if you bid on the auctions, um, whereas TikTok doesn't because it's broken and they won't fix it. So, you know, <laughs> and TikTok takes like 60% of the money, which is insane. Um, YouTube doesn't. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Um, I don't know what sats are. What are sats? Mm, what are sats? I don't know what sats are. Um, do I get I don't know what sats are, so I wouldn't know if you get them. <laughs> oh, Saturdays. Yes, yes. Yeah, well, you get Saturday anywhere. You also get Saturday if you were to subscribe at TikTok as well. But the VIP auctions, you've got to do, yeah, you've got to do via one of the other services because TikTok's broken, unfortunately. So, yeah, I'm not going to do a wrap up now, Joseph. We went too long. It's an hour and a half. Not too long, but I like, like I said, my voice, I want to give my voice a, a rest. So, sorry. No wrap up. But yes, all right, guys. So, thank you. I'm yawning at you, too. <laughs> exactly. I'll be in Chicago next week and then off to Asia late Thursday night. Um, and then I'll be checking in with video. At the very least, I will do uh, TikTok videos and YouTube short videos, uh, sh or maybe even longer ones on YouTube, just giving you guys little tours of things I'm seeing in Asia. Um, I will do some lives, although the lives are not going to be the show like this because I don't have time. Um, so I'm what I'm going to do is I will at least check in some of the mornings in Asia, like when I'm having coffee, hanging out before I go and join everybody because I'm there for my nephew's wedding. So I can at least check in from where I'm staying 
and kind of hang and tell you guys what I've been seeing over coffee and stuff. So we can do that. And, and again, 10 a.m. there is going to be like 10 a.m., 10 p.m. in Washington, D.C., which means Europe, it'll be the middle of the night. So that doesn't help. But at least for the Americans, it'll be evening. So um, but for Europe, it's a mess. So who knows? Maybe I'll maybe mid afternoon if I come home at some point. I'm just I'm going to try to do lives every once in a while just to kind of hang with you guys. So you get, you know, so we still get to hang out. So. All right. All right, guys. Have a good night. Yep. Oh, thank you. Lee. Oh, thank you, Lee. Lee just already signed up. Thank you, Lee. Appreciate it. Lee just became a YouTube uh, a subscriber. Thank you. Thanks, Blue Ariel. Well, I mean, I'm still here. I'm still be online with you guys through next Thursday. So tomorrow morning, we've got our hangout with for all the paid subscribers. And then Monday, I'm back doing another show on Monday from Chicago. So we will have the the paneling you all love at mom's house. So you'll get that on Monday. <laughs> so all right, guys, I'm going to sign off and I will see the rest of you tomorrow. I'll see a bunch of you tomorrow morning. And then I will see the rest of you Monday from mom's place in Chicago.